Test, test, test. All right. Can y'all hear me? All right. All right. Can we give God a hand of praise, please? Amen. Amen. So good, good to see everybody here this morning. All of our guests, we thank God for you being here. We thank God for each and every one of you for family. Amen. Can we thank, thank God for family? Just thank God. Just bless God for your brother, your sister. Amen. We might not have the last name, but if we love Jesus, then we, we got we are blood. Amen. With blood. Thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Let's do our Bible affirmation. Amen. I'm going to get in. We're going to get into this word and be honorable to our time. Amen. Thank you for coming for our power. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's do our, our Bible affirmation. It should be on your screen. Amen. Let's ready. Let's do it. Let's go. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. You believe that? Give God a shout. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter uh, 7, and we're going to look at chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 7 and Isaiah chapter 9. A few verses from those texts. Isaiah chapter 7. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, we're going to look at verse 14. And then we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 6 and 7. We're going to give you what God has given us. We're going to load up our wagon and get out of your way. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Again, I apologize for not having my PowerPoint up. Amen. Please forgive me. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. When you got in there, say, uh-huh, oh, yeah. Here it is. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Somebody say, a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen, amen, amen. Verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. It says, for unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Look back at the top at the, at the top of verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The, the word of the Lord, it is blessed. We want to consider for a thought this morning before we pray. Who runs your government? Who runs your government? This is part one. We're going to finish up on, on, on next Sunday. Who runs your government? Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Who runs your government? Hallelujah. Thank you uh, so much for those who, who helped us celebrate our daughter on her 18th birthday. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much for helping us wish uh, Deacon Mike and Deacon uh, Bobby Hall happy birthday as well. Amen. All those who had birthdays, thank you so much. Amen. For being, helping us celebrate good life. Amen. Isaiah the prophet is believed to, to be uh, uh, the most prolific writer of prophetic words about the birth of the Messiah than any other uh, uh, Old Testament prophetic literature. When we talk about Old Testament, the prophetic literature of the Old Testament, it begins in Isaiah, Isaiah uh, and ends in Malachi. Those are considered the prophetical books. Isaiah is is believe, is is clearly is is clearly he's the he's the most prolific writer when it comes to talking about the Messiah, the coming the coming Savior, 
uh, of, of Israel. You know, from, from Isaiah to Malachi, all of those characters were trying to point us toward something. All of those, all those, were, all those books, those books of pro- prophecy were, were pointing us in the same direction. They were pointing us, pointing in one direction. And Hebrews 12 says it like this. It says that all of them dreamed of what we now have. All of them dreamed of what you and I right now are in possession of. That's something. That's something. For 4,000 years, they were, they were talking about, anticipating, hoping, dreaming, wishing for what you now possess as a believer. It's good. They saw, they saw a God. They, for them, they saw a God who would visit and leave. He would light upon somebody and would, would, would wreck the house but then would leave. He would come and rest upon somebody. They would prophesy and speak, but then he'd leave. But they dreamed of a God who would live on the inside of them. We have that right now. We have that right now in full measure. They they lived for a sacrifice that would be the last sacrifice for sin, and they wrote about it constantly. Every year, Israel would have to go to the the temple, and they would buy uh, uh, lambs, sacrificial lambs and goats and turtle doves and bulls. And each year they would have to make sacrifice for sin. Each year the priest would take take the knife and would would slit the throat of the the animal and bleed the animal out and and take that blood and pour it on the mercy seat. Each year year, uh, animals were sacrificed for, 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 for grace. For sin that was committed. Each year, a, a scapegoat, the, the blood was placed on the scapegoat and sent out into the, into the desert to die. It was a sign that your sins had been forgiven. Each year, they went through this practice. But they, they, and they, but they wrote about a, the time where there would only be one sacrifice. And the, the Bible says that Jesus, he was, our, he was the last sacrifice. He was the offerer and the offering. These prophets wrote about the time where there would be no more sacrifice. They, 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 Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says that there's a, there's a child coming, and, and this child is going to be a sign. Somebody shout sign. He says, Isaiah says there's a child that is coming, and he is going to be to us a sign. Isaiah chapter 9, he says, he, says, now rem- he goes on, he says, remember this child, is going to be a sign. He said, I said it in, verse seven, in chapter 7. I'm saying it again in, in, chapter, in chapter 9. This child is going to be a sign, and, and the government is going to be on this child's shoulders. It's a lot of responsibility for a baby. He, wa- he wasn't just the child. He was the son of God. Isaiah says, and the government would be on his shoulders and on this child who's going to be a sign a government is going to rest ah this is good this is good when 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 this child gets here isaiah says he's not bringing with him a religion <clears throat> let it marinate let it marinate he didn't say he was bringing a denomination he didn't say he was bringing a reformation he said he's bringing a government this child, this sign, is, was not a religious leader. I said what I said. He was not a religious leader. He is a king. And a king is political. A king is a political figure. Governments are not typically talked about in religious circles, he is not a religious figure. Religion is what I regularly do. I religiously brush my teeth. You ought to be glad about that. <laughs> I religiously take baths and put on deodorant. Oh, by the way, I'm making my own deodorant, uh, just in case somebody want to know. Uh, so... If in the next few days you, you catch a whip, I, I, 
I'm in process. I'm in process. I'm in process. He's not, he's not a religious figure. He's a political figure. He didn't, he didn't come bringing a religion. He's bringing a government. And Isaiah says, and this government is going to be on his shoulders, which means, which means he, he, the government isn't carrying me. I'm carrying it. Teach on in here, Pastor Radford. When, when, when this child shows up, there will be a different mode of governing our lives. When I talk about this government, I'm not talking about senators, uh, legislators, uh, delegates, politicians. I'm not talking about the people in, in, in Washington. He's not, talking about, he's not talking about the Roman government at that time. He's not talking about the, the, the U.S. government because those governments come and go. If you read on, he says, and the, and the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The Roman government, as far as I know, failed. And if we keep living and keep doing what we're doing here, this government, all right. It is the nature of all governments, human governments, to fall. He's not talking about a human government. He's talking about how we govern our lives. How we, you, you heard the phrase, govern yourself accordingly. You don't need a law for that. <laughs> govern yourself accordingly. He's talking about how we govern, and the way we govern our lives are going to be on his shoulders. So this is good. When this child shows up, Isaiah says, what, what, what used to govern us will no longer be able to govern us. Scripture says, sin will no longer be our master. When this, this sign that Isaiah spoke about was bringing in a new way of living that would break free, that would break us free from the shackles of sin and death. This, this child. Verse, verse, verse six and verse seven. Oh, he, he says, he says, of the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end. Of the increase of his government. Don't run, don't run over that. Of the increase of of, of, of his government and peace. What does that mean? Wherever, wherever his government, wherever his government is, the, 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 the greater his government is visible or his ability to operate and run in your life, the greater his peace in our life is. So you can tell somebody who's governed by God by how much peace there is. Amen. I said what I said. And when I say peace, I don't mean the absence of trouble. Peace is not a, peace is the is the presence of God in the middle of trouble. Peace is, is your ability to take a licking and keep on ticking. Peace is your ability to see it but not let it affect you. Peace is your ability to know what they said and still do what God called you to do, even though you know they don't mean you any any good. Peace, he says, he says, he says, the, 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 he said, with the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So to the degree that you let God have control will be to the degree that you see peace in your life. You, come on, anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about in here this morning? You, you, you ever been in a place where it looked like you were going under? It looked like it was the last, you know, you know how they used to do in the cartoon? It was usually, usually Popeye and Blue though. You know, y'all remember that? I'm out of age. I done, I done age myself. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know about. Y'all know about. Here he go. Do the. <laughs> he go down. You, you felt like you were about to go down. Go about to go under. And there was no way you could handle the thing that was coming. But all of a sudden, it was just a piece about you. I should be pulling my hair out. I should be banging my head against the wall. But I'm at peace. Where does that come from? That don't come from you. That comes from God. The increase because you increase His ability to move in your life. You say stuff like, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust you to do it. God, I don't know where the, where, where's, where the next is coming from, but I trust you to do it. That is peace. I told you. I told you. 
You heard the story. We got we got we got taken when when they when they were doing all that corrupt stuff with 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 with, with the with the mortgage stuff, and we got a predatory uh, lender got a hold of us, and they called and said we've been we gonna foreclose on your house on Monday, and it was Friday evening. Whew. That's a little pressure. And you had to, and I was, I was I was talking to my son just this morning. I said we gotta. I said because God has made us thoughtful. We're thoughtful people. That means that we're, we're all tender and, 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 and teddy bears and rainbows. It just means we think a lot. It just means we think a lot. Thoughtful. Full of thought. And the enemy will love to, get, to trap you there in your mind by showing you the images of what, of what he wants you to believe. And for a minute, the devil had me. Oh, you're going to be thrown out. Your stuff going to be out on the floor, on the, on the, on the yard. Your neighbors going to look at you, talk about you. What you gonna, where are you going to take your kids? And I had to quickly get out of my mind and get into my spirit. And I said, God, you put me in this house. I asked you if this was ours. You said yes. So, Lord, either you're going to keep us here or you're going to find us someplace better. And I was done. I was, can I, can I, can I do, can I tell you the truth? Was I tempted to go back all day? Was I tempted to get back in my head all day? But I, 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 I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in. See, that's peace. That's peace. I don't know where the next is coming from. I don't know how he's going to turn this thing around. Listen, my, they, they, they told us that and my mama was coming. We were going away on a conference and my mama was coming and the devil said, your mama, go, they're going to kick you, your kids and your mama out. Why are, you, why are you going away on a conference? I had to come out my head. I said, God, if God be for me, who can be Against me, God, and that's it. Here's the thing. Let me let me let me let me, let me balance this. Let me balance this because I I don't want nobody who's living dirty to think you can just use that and get out. You got to be righteous. You got to be in, and what righteous means in right standing with God. You 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 can't be shooting yourself in the foot and say God gonna bless me. No no no. You probably, you need to pay for that. You you bought it. You need to pay for it. Let me balance that. Let me balance. You don't don't go wrong. The pastor said I can just I can just claim Jesus and live dirty. No, no. If you're living dirty, you're gonna have to deal with the dirt you did. But those who are in the right standing with God, you can come before Him and say, God, uh, to, th- to thee and thee alone. <laughs> God, I thank you. I said, and so and so I got I got out my head. I'm just trying to show you what peace looks like. What peace look, it, is, it is not the absence of trouble. It is your ability to let God. Govern. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. It is your ability that in the middle of the in the middle of the hell to let God govern you. Cause I'm cause there are times I'm 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 I'm, willing, I'm there to lose my mind, freak out, bust the windows out of somebody's car, let, let, do do something. But in, in my head, it seems good at the moment because it, it'll relieve some pressure. But the Holy Spirit say no. Peace, peace is your ability to let God govern in the chaos, to let God govern in the disruption. He says, he says, of the increase of his government, to the degree that you let him govern, the increase, he says, he says, his peace will increase in your life. Ah, the more areas of our lives, ah, the more areas in our lives uh, this child has jurisdiction and authority over, the more peace we'll have in that area. Mm-hmm. As a father, I wonder sometimes did I did I did I did I pour everything in my son that I need that he needed? As a father, when he's out and he's doing, did I did I did I tell him everything he needs to know? And the answer is no, because I never had a child like that. So there was some stuff I missed. And if I'm not careful, the enemy will, will, will get me in my head again. But I have to come out and get, and get in the spirit and say, God, the stuff I missed, I thank you for, for, for showing him up in that area. The stuff I did not say or I did not articulate clearly enough, God, you speak to his heart right now. To the, to, to the degree that God has control will determine the level of peace in your life. Hallelujah. Amen.
Y'all ready to eat? All right. All right. How much time I got, babe? How much time I got? About Ten minutes. All right. There we go. Woo. All right. Here we go. This child, Jesus, this child that Isaiah is talking about is Jesus. And, and, and that means that Jesus was a sign. Somebody say a sign. He was a sign. He was a, he was a sign. He was a sign. And so, so, so <laughs> Jesus, his intent was to always be a sign. Now, I, 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 I got to be careful. I got to be careful here because I don't want you to misunderstand or misinterpret what I'm about to say. <laughs> I am in no way trying to misrepresent or diminish anything that Jesus has done. I am team Jesus. I'm team Jesus. That's my big brother. But I need you to understand this. Jesus never intended for us to just meet him. Let it marinate. I'll, I'll pause for effect. He never intended for us to just meet him and stop. Jesus viewed himself as a doorway, an entry point. To be more specific and to be more precise, he's the only entry point. Jesus came into the world to settle the sin debt that put us in opposition with God. He was and still is the only, the one and only point of access back into the presence of God. Don't take my word for it. Jesus said in John 10, 9 and 10, he says, I am the door. That's what he says. He said, he, he, I didn't say it. He said, he said, I am the door. But by, by me, if any man e enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus said it himself. I'm the door. And the door is, is the entrance to the house or the room. He didn't come that we just get the door. He came that we might receive what the door opens us up to. Religion has said, just get saved and you'll be good. You're just hanging out at the door. In other words, in other words, to get what God has for us <clears throat> can only be accessed through fellowship with Christ. So I'm not diminishing what Christ has done, but I'm letting you know there's more to it. There's more to it. That's just the, that's the beginning of the story. You don't go to kindergarten and you quit, think you got everything. It's just the beginning. It's the entry point. We celebrate you. That's why they have gra kindergarten graduation. But you know what? That is not the end. Jesus is the door. And he says, he says I did not come so you could just celebrate the door. Uh. <laughs> and there's a lot of people, we're not walking. The reason why the church is as, as anemic as she is is because we made the push that just get Jesus, just get saved, just, just confess. But, and that's good. You need that to get in. But, but once you're there, you got to keep going. There's no way we're able to do the greater works that he told us about if we just stop at the door. Hallelujah. In the garden, Adam, Adam functioned as, I want, I, want, I want to make a shift right here in my last seven minutes. Last seven minutes, last seven minutes. Okay. In the garden, uh, Adam functioned as God's representative or, or his ambassador. The garden functioned and operated as a satellite state or, or colony of heaven. The garden and subsequently the earth was never intended to operate outside or devoid of God's law. The garden was set up and was designed for Adam to run it like God run, ran heaven. That was, the, that, was the, that was the idea. When he says be fruitful and multiply, he wasn't talking about having babies. He says reproduce this. Reproduce this. Reproduce this. What you see here in the garden, reproduce it over there. Reproduce it out there. Reproduce it over there. God says reproduce. You, you, your, 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 your company shouldn't be this. Your cubicle and your, your area of, of, of influence shouldn't stay the same if you are a kingdom citizen. I'm just telling you. 
Now, that don't mean you beat people over the head with the Bible, but your lifestyle should change the atmosphere. Your light, your living, your, 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 your attitude, your approach should change the atmosphere around you. He says, be fruitful and multiply. He says, take what's here and reproduce it over there. There was a law. There was a law. There was a law of God. We were not meant to live devoid of the law of God. And there's a law that governs everything. Adam's sin forfeited God's law, and the law of sin infiltrated and began to govern things. With Adam's sin, he was kicked out from the garden, and the law of sin began to govern in the earth. The more we allow sin to infiltrate the areas of our lives, the more, the, the more that sin's rule or governance increases. Y'all still with me? Look at, your name, look at your name and say, sin never stays the same size. So you got to quit playing with it. It never, it never stays the same size. My grandma said, whatever you feed will grow. You look at, she said, ooh, look at these kids. She said, well, yeah, yeah, you keep feeding them, they're going to grow. You keep feeding sin, it's going to grow. And the more we feed it, the more it grows. Con conversely, the less we feed it, the less it grows. Sin has a law, and, and the more permission it has, the more its government increases. But here comes Jesus, who, who is sent to break the power of the old law and reestablish the original law with its original governance on the inside of us. Jesus came as, I can't, can't preach this, he came as the second man, Adam. I got three minutes. He came as the second man, Adam. That's why the, Bible, old, the New Testament calls him the second Adam, which means he, he came to replace the first one. He came to finish what the first one was hindered from doing. Hallelujah. So what, what, what does that governance look like, Pastor? What does it look like? It looks like the Holy Spirit filling us and leading us into all areas of truth. That's what it looks like. It looks like, it looks like, uh, it looks like Holy Spirit filling us and ordering our steps and our stops. That's what it looks like. It, 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 looks like, it looks like everywhere we bring and allow God's governance it looks like their peace will be there with us. Everywhere we, we, we bring God and allow his governance and allow him to rule, you're going to see peace. So when we, when we, when we let God govern <clears throat> our money, there'll be peace. When we let God govern our relationships, there'll be peace. When we let God govern our marriage, there'll be peace. When we let God govern our, 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 our mind, there'll be peace. When we let him govern it, when we let him govern our career, there will be peace. Somebody say peace. It comes with, it comes with the level of, of, of allowance we give God to come in. He said he was a sign. He was a sign. You do not go. We don't go on our way to D.C., you see D.C., 28 miles. You don't stop at the sign and say, I'm in D.C. But it's a sign to tell you you're moving in the right direction. And the closer you get to D.C., the more signs you start to see. What I'm trying to tell you, the closer you keep moving in purpose with God, the more signs you're going to see that, he, that you're moving in the right direction. See, when, 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 we, when, we drive, when we're driving back to Arkansas, we'll see, we'll see uh, uh, a sign. It'll say, uh, 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 Nashville, 183 miles. And you won't see another sign until Nashville, 83 miles. 60 miles, but the, the closer you get to Nashville, it'll say Nashville, 34 miles. Nashville, 28 miles. Nashville, 22 miles. Nashville, 17 miles. Because the closer you get to it, the more signs you begin to see. Some of you are going to start to see signs 
that God is with you as you move toward the place he's called you to be. As you move toward the place of destiny, you're going to start seeing signs. God's going to start whispering things in your ear. He's going to start confirming things around you because the closer you get, listen, not only, not only do the signs increase, but the attacks increase. And you need to hear God in your ear saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. I know what you heard, but keep moving, keep moving, because you're moving in purpose, because the devil doesn't like you to get to the destination he wants you to be. He doesn't mind you running the race. Just don't get to the destination. He said, Jesus is a sign. Then he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, uh, uh. As, I'm, as I'm preparing for this, I want to talk about free, free will. I'm going somewhere with this. Free will. He says, you be honest with yourself. Free will has an expiration date. Free will is time sensitive. Free will is time sensitive. What do I mean by that? There's some stuff you can do. Thank you big. And do all, as my grandma said, do all you big and bad enough to do. But when it's time, you can't do it no more. Thank you for that one amen. I appreciate that. You can, I mean, you, you, you do what you think you, I'm going to do all I want. But when it's time, nothing works. Everything shuts down because God says it's time. Free will is time sensitive. There's some stuff. Some of you in here right now, there's some stuff. You, some of you tried to walk away from God, but you couldn't. You ain't got to tell me. I know. I tried to walk away from this call, but I couldn't. Because it was, it, 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 he, he, said, he, says, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. I believe in this room, I'm talking to some chosen people here who recognize that, that, that even, even when you don't want to do it, you, you've been, because you've been chosen. God says, I hear you, but, but he's, he's still pressing. He says, he says, I hear you, but that, that, that don't, I didn't ask you all that. You ever had God ever tell you, I didn't ask you all that. God tell you to do something, you tell him why you can't do it, and ask you all that. And ask you all that. Why am I saying this? Because, because the angel came to, to Mary and said, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Holy Spirit has overshadowed you. Meaning, meaning. She said, she said I, 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 how can this be? I don't know, man. I didn't ask you all that. I didn't ask you all that. He said, the Holy Spirit has overshadowed you. Meaning, he, he selected you even though you, even though you, you didn't want to do it. I'm telling you right now, God has overshadowed. Some of you, you're wrestling with something right now. It's because God has overshadowed you. And he's filled you with something, and a desire, a drive. You, the, re, the reason why stuff bothers you right now is because the answer's in you. I said what I said. The reason why it bothers you so much because maybe the answer is in you. He overshadowed you. The same way he overshadowed Mary. And there's some beasts that they're going to have some Josephs in your life that want to put you away privately. Why do, we, why do they want to do that? Because they can't control what's in you. That's a whole other message for a whole other time. Some folk want to put you away because they didn't, have, they, they didn't control what took place. And they're fearful that if they let you continue, then you might, out, you might surpass them and, out, and out, outdo them. But God will keep you the same way he kept Mary. Because as Joseph was getting ready to put her away privately, Holy Spirit came to him and said, don't you do that. This is a holy thing. And lastly, Matthew 6 and 33. I need everybody stand. Matthew 6 and 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And these things shall be added unto you. He says, seek ye first. Seek ye first. He said, look for the sign. Seek ye first the kingdom. Look for the kingdom. Look for God's governance. Look for where the king is ruling. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his 
righteousness. Righteousness is his right way of doing things. He says, when you seek first the kingdom, when you seek first the governance of the king, God, I want you to rule this. God, I want you to have control over this. And his right way of doing things. He says, all these things shall be added unto you. Who's running your government? Is it your emotions? Is it the surrounding conditions around you? Is it your past? Who's running your government? Who's running your government? Who's in control? Who has governance? Because to the degree that you let whatever, whoever have control, that will determine the level of peace. That will determine the level of peace. God's trying to get somebody in this room right now to let go of some stuff you've been holding on to that don't even fit your hands anymore. You keep grabbing at it. It keeps slipping. You think you got it for a minute, but it gets out your hand. You think you, think you got a handle on it, but it slips your hand because guess what? It was never intended to fit your hand. It was never meant for you to carry. Those are the things that you do, what David said, cast your care on him. For he cares for you. Guess what? Where do they land? Oh, <laughs> can I join this church? That preacher preaching good, goodness. They land on his shoulders. Same way that cross was on his shoulders. The same way that cross was on his shoulders. He's not going to take it from you. You got to give it to him. Anybody in this room, you ready to give up what 2023 has been weighing you down with? If you're in this room right now and you say, I, I want to leave, I want to leave the weight of, two, of 2023 in 2023, the weight of, 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 of disagreements, the, the weight of, of miscommunication, I want to lay it down, the weight of sickness, the weight, I want to lay it down. The weight of, of, of reoccur listen, reoccurring sin. I want to lay it down. If that's you, just lift your hands all over the building. Lift your hands right where you are if you're watching. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, live, we lay down every weight and every sin that so does easily beset us. Everything that causes us to trip and stumble and fall. God, we lay it before your feet right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, take it. Holy Spirit, take it. I, I take my hands off of it. I release it into your care. I cast it on you now in the name of Jesus. Take what I can't fix and you fix it. Take what I can't hold and you hold it in the name of Jesus. And Father, if you can take this, Help me to trust you to take the other things that I still hold on you. Help, help me to, 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 to trust you with the other things, the other issues, the other weights that keep me from flowing with you, that keep me from moving with you. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. In the name that is above all names. King eternal. Everlasting father. We thank you. For the sign. We thank you for the sign. And we submit ourselves. Our, our whole selves. 
to your governance. We submit our whole selves to your governance. We trust you, God, to do in us what we can't do in ourselves. Help us raise our children. Help us maintain our relationships. Help us better govern our finances. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us be better stewards, God, of the things you've trusted unto us. We'll forever give your name the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe that right now, give him some glory. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Come on, give him some glory. Who governs your government? Who runs your government? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a part of our worship this morning. Pray something was said that bless you. If you want to give your heart to God, this, this king who came to pay the sin debt, price we owed, he took. It's called salvation. The blood of Jesus saved us. And if you are listening by social media, you want to give your heart to God. There's a video that's coming right behind this. If you're ready to make that decision to give God your heart, pray that prayer as they lead you in it. It's the door. It's the beginning. We celebrate that, but I need you to know it doesn't end there. Once you receive Christ, it's up to you now to resemble him. Oh, that's good. That's good. To reflect him in the earth and it means you have to study him pray the prayer get saved become a disciple if you're in this area we love to help you do that but we're praying that you find somebody that you connect with somebody that you move on to be a disciple till next week we'll see you does anybody here you're not saved you're not giving I hope you enjoyed that message. If this is something, the message that you heard, if it touched your heart, if it has changed your life today, and you're at a place right now in your life where you say, I haven't given my life over to the Lord. I haven't invited him into my heart. Today is a great day to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. It's the prayer of salvation. It's inviting the Lord into your heart. The Bible says that those who believe in their hearts and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and was raised from the dead, you will be saved. So I'm just going to pray. And repeat after me if this is a decision you would like to make today. God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe that he was raised from the dead and that he is my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It is that simple. It is that simple. Your next step is, is to drop a comment down below and say I prayed. And we'll get someone connected with you and we'll get you started on your journey. I hope you have a great day.